The eyes of the baseball world are on Dodger Stadium and Clayton Kershaw, and I am all in favor of it. USC has a guy who might, just might, be the key to the entire program's resurgence. And LeBron and Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis, they all get together for tea, crumpets, and who gets to run the pick and roll. Hi, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It is July 19th, 2022. This is my last day home before I have to fly east for a few days for work. We added new subscribers yet again. I am always grateful for every last one of you. If you like the content we've been putting out, feel free to clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we put out a new clip. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Because it's going to be lonely at the airport later today, I'll tell you that. There were no games that were played this uh, last night involving LA teams, but tonight, the All-Star Game comes back to Dodger Stadium for the first time since 1980. Six Dodgers are on the team, including starting pitcher Clayton Kershaw. And once again, to prove that the WNBA doesn't know what it's doing, the Sparks will also be playing at 7.30. They will be hosting the Indiana Whatevers. Get your tickets now. Clayton Kershaw was named the starter for the National League All-Star team, and I am just, it's just cool. It's just cool. Now, he is the first pitcher uh, to start as a member of the so-called home team in the National League, or for anybody in the All-Star game since Max Scherzer in 2018. Kershaw's resume is unparalleled of any of money on either roster. Three Cy Young Awards, nine-time All-Star, five-time ERA champion, and an MVP. Not just Cy Young, MVP. Now, you could even make the argument this year, though, that Clayton Kershaw wasn't even the best pitcher on the Dodgers. Tony Gonsolin has more wins. Both Gonsolin and Kershaw, their ERA is in the low twos, and Gonsolin is microscopic. But Kershaw flirted with two perfect games this year. You got to give the people what they want. It's got to be Clayton Kershaw. And by the way, you might be saying, well, James, I know you're really into L.A. and whatnot. Did you, are you totally into the All-Star weekend? No. No, not at all. You think I'm going to watch Home Run Derby? Do you really think I want to watch Chris Berman for three hours going back, 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 back? No. I would rather dip my testicles into a vat of sulfuric acid than to hear Chris Berman talk for a cut. No. No. Chris Berman is indicative of everything that's wrong in televised sports journalism. He needs to go away for good. We mentioned the Dodgers drafted a guy named Dalton Rushing, a catcher out of Louisville. Now, back when I was a sports writer, uh, there was a belief that the first round pick in an MLB draft had a 15% chance of being a superstar. Uh, this pick for the Dodgers, though, was number 40th overall. And that's uh, that not being in the first round was a result of the Dodgers going over the salary cap. The catcher is Described as a work in progress, maybe he'll be a regular everyday player. So, not necessarily superstar caliber. We'll see what happens as time goes by. The number five ranked linebacker and the number 92 prospect overall, as listed by 24-7 Sports, is a kid from Louisiana named Tackett Curtis. He's a linebacker. He is committed to USC. He's a 12th recruit that has said yes to the Trojans. And uh, it's a good idea on a number of levels. For example, USC's recruiting class had dipped out of the top 10 all the way down to 18. This guy alone lifts them all the way back up to 13, just on the periphery. This is a terrific idea on a number of reasons. Uh, it is the fourth top 100 recruit for their 2023 class, but all, even more importantly, it feels a need. It feels a big need for SC. You see, people have been asking me for a while, 
when are the Trojans back? We know they've landed a big piece with Coach Lincoln Riley. We know that they added a bunch of skill players, but when is USC back? And in my opinion, it's when somebody wears 55, a linebacker. Lincoln Riley's not stupid. He knows what this number means in USC lore. It means an anointed defensive leader. Somebody wearing 55 means that it's not just the offense that's back, it's the defense. That's when you're gonna know that USC really means business again, because they have somebody to fill those shoes. So maybe, just maybe, it's Tackett Curtis. Time will tell. Under Armour has a camp in Florida where recruits drill and then they hold a seven on seven scrimmage. Now remember it's seven on seven, so that doesn't mean you're talking about linemen, which is something that USC eventually has to address. USC recruits went nuts during this little combine. Like for example, there's a wide receiver, Makai Lemon. He is part of the 2023 recruiting class. He burned a guy so bad that the defender actually screamed WTF. The actual words, I'm not cussing, but you get the idea. That's getting toasted. Also, USC wide receiver Zachariah Branch was named MVP among wide receivers and defensive backs. So SC, they showed out. Here's somebody who showed out in the opposite way, former USC coach, current Ole Miss coach, Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin comes out on SEC Media Day and he decries NIL for, you know, this is the way that college athletes are allowed to legally be paid and still play. He says, oh my God, NIL, NIL it's, a, it's such a disadvantage for us. It's so bad for us. Coach, <laughs> I'm so sorry you got left on the tarmac once again while the airplane of progress takes off in the distance. But... The idea that the SEC, you guys are the last people in anywhere in sports who should complain about being put at a disadvantage. The SEC is at a disadvantage now, really. If it weren't so humid down there, I would suggest you cry me a river. I mean, the unfair advantages, right? You have legions of hillbilly sports writers in the SEC that comprise a voting block that intentionally lift lousy SEC teams up closer to the national title picture. You are the richest conference in the entire country. You have your own network that is also the richest individual network in the country. And then, oh, by the way, you have every network as a result kissing your ass so that your teams can get the best spots. But now you're at a disadvantage. You're trying to convince me of that. And they say, and the men of the South like to say that, they, that, that we on the West need to grow a pair over competitive advantages. Chumps. Now it's unfair to you. I will admit you did pitch one thing that was kind of interesting, the idea of a, uh, of a salary cap in NIL. Yeah, have at it. Talk about that. But don't sit there and tell me that you would, oh, you know what? I tell you something that just came to me off the top of my head. The idea of not paying athletes, slave labor. Gee, where have we heard about that before? The southeast of the country. Wake up and smell the 21st century for Pete's sakes. There was a three-way phone call between LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. NBA sources told Yahoo Sports. Now, before I get too deep in the details, I want to pull back the old theater curtain uh, into modern sports journalism. See, back in the day, way back in the day, this inner sanctum stuff was rarely reported, if ever. Matter of fact, when Pat Riley became the coach of the Lakers back in the early 80s, he went to the board in the locker room and wrote that a house divided against itself will not stand. You are either with me or against me. And the message was clear. We're keeping our stuff in house and we're going to work hard behind closed doors. So a lot of stuff was kept in the room. As a result, I have no idea how accurate HBO's winning time uh, series was. So when it changed, how it changed, I honestly don't know, 
But generations passed, and now you see this drama queen, Game of Thrones crap coming out all the time. Shaq versus Kobe. And now LeBron James versus Russell Westbrook. Look, the drama was always there in a competitive locker room. It's just whether it becomes public or not. Much like drama you might even have in your own marriage, so to speak. You just don't share it with everybody. It's And now in addition to that, it's whether or not you choose to pay attention. There are very few teams where all this drama gets laid out. The Lakers are one of them. I would say the Dallas Cowboys are also definitely one of them, but definitely the Lakers. You see, if you let this stuff out, and if we as fans pay attention to it, we just get buried then by a bunch of cartoony, contradictory BS. So now Yahoo is reporting after all this drama how LeBron hates this and Russell hates that. Now we're, te we're being told that the current Lakers Big Three chatted last weekend in Vegas and committed to doing whatever it takes to win. So what the hell are we supposed to believe? What are we supposed to believe? Oh, we're supposed to believe that Russell Westbrook never requested a trade. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. What are we supposed to believe? So like I'm saying, you can do one of two things with all of these Lakers stories that come out. You can go on sports radio and say, Roby, I'm scared. What are the Lakers going to do? Or you could just be a well-adjusted man. Be with your wife. Be with your spouse. Be with whoever. It's not my concern. And just wait to see if the Lakers will win. Rams backup nose tackle Bobby Brown is suspended for six games because he violated the NFL's performance enhancing substance policy. This opens a spot for undrafted uh, rookie Elijah Garcia. Is it a needle mover? No idea. But Aaron Donald has to take a playoff once in a while. Chargers GM Tom Telesco has a don't negotiate after Labor Day policy. Now I always thought it was don't wear white pants after Labor Day, but what do I know, right? This is a potential problem because of safety Derwin James, or Derwin James. He's not only an elite safety, but he is the so-called star in the Brandon Staley defensive scheme. And yes, he's up for a contract extension. This is the last year of his contract. Now, what is the star of Brandon Staley's defensive system? For those who don't know, Staley created a special position when he was the defensive coordinator of the Rams. It's a defensive back but he also has linebacker responsibilities. So he could line up anywhere and be a destructive force, just like Jalen Ramsey is over with the Rams. But this guy is a safety. And the current highest paid safety in the league is Pittsburgh's Minka Fitzpatrick, who makes 18 million per year. So Telesco, like I said, he's the guy who likes to wait if he's not going to get something done by Labor Day. But what happens to the Chargers if Telesco doesn't get something done before Labor Day? And then all of a sudden, in this new fangled uh, defense with all these upgraded players, if James goes nuts, how much more money does he get? How much more damage does it do to the cap? Wait and see. ESPN analyst Chris Canty, by the way, currently ranks two Chargers players in his top five most overrated. James, by the way, is one of them. Uh, Khalil Mack is the other. And the parentally offended Bolt Beat blog complained about that too. Guys, seriously, grow up. Who thinks who is overrated? It doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is wins and losses. Okay, one day you guys are going to get that through your head. You're going to put the hankies down and appreciate what you have. Besides that, the reason that James and Mac uh, were ranked as overrated is because they're both injury prone. That's legit. Elite athletes, they lose their elite status due to injury all the bleeping time. It's not that big a deal. Grow up. Now, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, thank you very much for watching, Faithful Angelinos. Don't forget to subscribe. We are trying to build something here for LA Sports. Thank you for watching. I'm James. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.